Hello and happy World Poetry Day. I'm Alex Reed. Um, I'm a musician. I have a band called Seeming. I used to have a band called Thou Shalt Not. Uh, I wrote a book called Assimilate, A Critical History of Industrial Music. And uh, I'm also a collector of zines. And I'm really specifically interested in 90s and 80s um, goth industrial culture. So I'm sitting here surrounded by just some random things that I have lying around. Here's Shadowed Sky. Here's Bast. Here's artificial life from the 80s. Uh, what else have we got? We've got um, Dark Heart. This is a Pittsburgh zine. I used to live in Pittsburgh. Here's an Australian one called Crown of Thorns. And uh, here's um, a privately published one by one author, D. Blood, called Darkest Corners Of. And then they don't say what the darkest corners are of. Lots of Ian Curtis kind of stuff in here. Um, but for World Poetry Day, I wanted to highlight one of the great underappreciated traditions of poetry, and that is um, that is goth poetry, teen angst goth poetry. I'm not talking about classic gothic poetry in the um, uh, in the sense of Percy Shelley or anything like that. I'm talking about stuff that teenagers and 20-somethings who were very sad and very angry would write in the 80s, 90s, and beyond. So um, I've curated, along with uh, the help of my uh, delightful partner Meredith, um, I've curated a small selection of some really ace goth poems, and by this I might not necessarily mean that they are great poems, but a few of them are quite good, but they are definitely very, very gothic, and these are from the pages of these otherwise lost zines, and so I'm really, really excited to be showing you some of these. This is The Poison Apple. This is a New York City-based goth scene from the 1990s. Uh, you can see here that they're talking about uh, Christian Death on the front and Convergence 11. And um, I'm going to start off by reading um, uh, a poem that I think is pretty apt for the current moment of pandemic. This is by Mary Winters. It is called The New York Times Reports Crows Moving into Manhattan. My city and I are doing just fine. Thank you. I am not dismayed by the arrival of crows. I do not take them as an omen of decay. They are not buzzards, lured by the dying. They are not a sign of failure, like birds in an abandoned field. Of Armageddon, scavengers among the ruins, crows are survivors, like the rat and the cockroach, like me. They're cawing in the courtyard. The city is thriving. It welcomes any life. Next up, from Sheltered Life. Uh, I believe this is from a Chicago-based, uh, or maybe, maybe it's Wisconsin. Yes, Wisconsin. Shorewood, Wisconsin, USA. <clears throat> um, uh, 1995. And uh, I'll read you one or two of these. First up, I quite like this as an example of uh, really everything that, uh, that like, 90s... Um, juvenile goth poetry gets into, and I say that with all affection. This is called Broken Dreams by Laurie Engel. Worlds shatter all around us. Prairie fires of obscenity dissolve, showered by young blood. The smoke fills the air, and my eyes, I cry for the sake of crying. I laugh for a world of broken dreams. And then a few pages later, we have a poem here by William Kopecki. Uh, <laughs> and this one really just cuts to the quick of the Gothic, um, maybe in all of its raw symbology and uh, maybe some of its problems as well. This is called Gothic. It's very short. Gothic. Castle exploding quietly. Fountains scream bloody pictures. Staircase full of dead women. Missed. So that's that one. Uh, next up, I've got um, an issue. This is issue two of Ghastly Magazine. If you are an L.A. goth, you might have known Ghastly Magazine. This was um, the big local publication of the 1990s. Um, if we're talking about great American goth zines, um, there are really only a few to talk about. There's pr um, uh, Propaganda, right? That's um, Fred Berger's magazine, which started in the early 80s. Um, but then you get... Ghastly, and you get Carpe Noctum, uh, and you get maybe Permission, and Industrial Nation, and a few others, but these are like the A-list uh, goth magazines of the day, and this is from an early issue. 
Um, I like this one, Meredith found this one. And this is by George Hyam. It is called Beauty Lies Deep. And um, it's, uh, it's a little simple. It's doggerel, but um, it's about love after death and, you know, necro, uh, necrophilia. What, what could be better than, than that as far as goth poetry goes? Here we go. It is a curse to see... Oh, sorry. I'm going to start again. Is it a curse to see beauty where others see none? To find love under the moon instead of under the sun? While others discard you as if you weren't fit to save, I'll come to rescue you from the cold of the grave. No jealous loves or lies to hinder our love, just the two of us together away from others above, sensuous and cool, your pale flesh against mine, an embrace to last the ages till the end of all time. Our loneliness is ended as we are joined together as one. Is it a curse to see beauty? where others see none. So that's charming, right? It's on this nice page with some collage graphics. And then the last one, this is one that I genuinely like. This is one that I feel like um, very affectionately and sweetly gets at the heart of the Gothic. Uh, and by that I mean the heart of goth, right? The heart of like goth culture, 80s, 90s. Um, and uh, yeah, this one's just charming. This is from issue two of Dance Macabre. This is a San Francisco-based zine. You can see here they've got uh, interviews with Switchblade Symphony from right around the time that their first album came out. Uh, this is by, um, well, they spell their name DVD, which I'm guessing is David. Um, and this is off of a page with art by Lisa. You can see the page right here. And it is called My Little Coven. I love this one. My little coven, that minor institution, that forum of folly and decadence and mock death worship, drinking wine like blood, squeezing blood from vines, dancing merrily, giddily, sinfully, then falling down and down and down, waking up in each other's arms, holding close, too close, arms wrapped around each other, squeezing out life, drinking salt, bitter juice, Squeezing and squeezing and squeezing until finally we all wiggled loose and flew away, never looking back to those days when feigning suicide meant exactly the opposite, and we all really loved life for a moment. Well, that's great. Thank you. Uh, and thank you to the poets who, um, with their full names or with pseudonyms or anonymously, submitted to these things back in the day. Um, I've got tons more of these, right? I've got an archive of like 500 goth scenes. Um, if you have some uh, and want to talk about uh, goth scenes together or contribute or uh, show and tell, get in touch. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash Reed. That's R-E-E-D. Um, and you can also go check out my music on Bandcamp from the band Seeming, S-E-E-M-I-N-G, or you can buy my book, Assimilate, A Critical History of Industrial Music. One of these days I'm going to do something interesting with all these zines, and um, I don't know, wouldn't it be fun to assemble something like the Oxford Companion to... Um, uh, to 80s goth poetry, right? That would be nice. Okay, enjoy World Poetry Day. Go write something, go read something. Um, stay inside or go outside very safely. There's a pandemic on, I hear, and that's kind of goth. You know, take, take enjoyment where you can. All right, bye. <laughs>